And as we reported at the top of the show, deadly violence blanketing cities across the country over the holiday weekend. At least six children are among the dead. Dozens of shootings reported in Atlanta, Chicago, and New York. Let's discuss with the senior director at Seeking Educational Excellence, Charles Love, and former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Uh, great to see both of you tonight. Thank you for coming back. You too. Thanks, Pam. All right, I want to start with this. Town Hall has the headline, Six Weeks, Six Cities, 600 Murders. They say, city after city operated by entrenched Democrats have seen a massive expansion in lawlessness, violence, and murder. I want to put up some stats first from New York, and then we'll go to Chicago. In New York, shootings up in June, 130 percent, murders up 30 percent, burglaries up 118 percent. 40,000 fewer arrests so far this year. In Chicago, the mayor said at a presser today for the four-day weekend, 87 people shot, 17 people killed. That includes two children. Um, Pam, as the former top law enforcement officer in Florida, what do you make of what we're seeing? Well, Shannon, it's complete lawlessness. That's what happens when you want to defund the police. In New York, they want to take away $1 billion from the police. So what does that do? Crime went up. The shootings went up 200 percent after they voted to defund the police, which is absolutely ridiculous. As a career prosecutor, what people forget, the police aren't out there to arrest you as much as they are to protect you. When someone calls 911, when a young child is shot, when there's a rape victim, when there's a human trafficking case, when someone needs a first responder, the police are the first ones on the scene. They are deflated. They're, um, they've been humiliated by what their own city has done to them. And it's no wonder that crime is, has gone through the roof there. You know, you, you, there have to be consequences for your actions. And what New York, what Mayor de Blasio has shown was, you can do whatever you want and there will be no consequences for your actions, unlike President Trump, who is the law and order president, and says he wants to come in and help wherever he's needed. He's willing, ready, and able to stop this lawlessness throughout our country. Okay, so Pam, you mentioned Mayor de Blasio. I want to play a little bit of what he says today, of course, the mayor of New York City. He says this is part of the explanation about why these numbers have skyrocketed. It's directly related to all the dislocation that's happened over these last four months with the coronavirus. As we're getting into warmer and warmer weather, and we're feeling the effects of people being cooped up for months, uh, and the economy obviously has not. Uh, restarted to the, anywhere the extent we need it to. So there's a lot less for people to do. Uh, we have a real problem here. I mean, Charles, he has a different explanation than Pam does. What do you make of his uh, attributing this to coronavirus, to people having economic trouble or being cooped up? That's why we're seeing this spike in shootings, murders, robberies, and everything else. Well, he's clearly wrong, but it's interesting because he says that uh, one of his points is the economic uh, distress. Well, he's played a part in the fact that uh, the economy is struggling or at least uh, helped it limp along instead of moving a little faster. But Pam made some good points, and, and uh, I totally agree, but it's even worse than that. I actually wished that they fund the police was the reason, because then we got a solution. Just fund them again and we'll be fine. But technically, it's worse than that. We haven't even seen the effect of defund the police yet. This stuff is, is skyrocketing simply because people are hearing that and seeing this freedom that's been going along for a while. You talk about bail reform and all these other things. You know, Chicago's had these problems and you talk about prosecutorial discretion, right? So not only do you have to see police with the Ferguson effect where they may not stop you to begin with, and then if they do stop you, you know, you may not, you, you got bill reform and things of that nature, but then you have prosecutors like Kim Park in uh, Chicago, people in Boston and other places where they, they ran on the fact that they're going to not prosecute certain crimes. And cr people make the mistake of thinking criminals are, are, you know, not smart. Just because you're a criminal means you're dumb. If you see that you have the opportunity where no one's going to stop you, then this will continue to happen. Hmm. Um, Paul Sperry tweets this out. I'm talking about, he's referencing an, out, uh, an article outlining all the, the um, death and violence over the weekend, especially kids. He says, it's just a taste of the coming violent crime wave from de-policing, defunding, and de-incarceration. Roundup doesn't even include 60 plus people shot and dozen murdered in New York City. Virtually all shooters and all victims, including children, were African Americans. Do Black Lives Matter? to Black Lives Matter. A quick comment from you both, Pam, we'll start with you. Well, well, and you have these, as, as your other guest just said, you have these liberal prosecutors 
in some jurisdictions who these people are being arrested and they're turning around and letting them out. That is a slap in the face of all these police officers. And yes, I agree. More people are going to be killed. Multiple children's lives were taken this weekend. What about the young child who witnessed her father gunned down in front of her and she was running through the streets? There is no law and order in these liberal cities and we've got to change that in our country. There has to be consequences for your actions and that's what has to take right. place and our men and women in blue have got to be supported. Yeah, Charles, final comment quickly to you. Well, I think the black lives do matter to most people and they really do care. It's just that no one's um, pushing for any policies that actually going to affect anything positive. There's a long term and a short term effect. Long term, you need something like what we do at Seeking Educational Excellence that's ground up. And in short term, you need to get control. And Black Lives Matter is not their, as you talk about the organization, it's not their primary goals. If you look at their goals, their goals are Palestine, immigration, you know, the LGBT movement and things of that nature. That's their stated goals and Marxism and to get rid of Trump. So they're not focused on the crime. So they're never going to be able to uh, do anything that that helps the problem because that's not their goals. All right, Charles and Pam, um, we hope that there will be solutions moving forward. Thank you both for weighing in tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me.